Hey guys, Gigi here. It is the new year and I apologize for my cat, but she will not leave me alone today, so she's probably going to be in most of the episode. Uh, say hi to Kimber. Hi Kimber! It is the new year and I'm going to try and do things I have freaking said I was going to do, which means Gigi's thoughts. Yay! The first thing we're going to talk about today is the brand, not really brand new, but new-ish very popular game that is out right now. Um, I know this is going to be backwards, but deal with me. Batman Arkham City. So Batman Arkham City is a very good game. It's got a lot of features that I really like about it. I'm just going to talk about the few that I like. Otherwise, this video would last for half an hour, and I don't feel like talking for half an hour, and I'm sure you don't feel like listening for half an hour. But the bad news first, the only two things I could really find as of right now is that it seems like it is the same thing over and over and over again in between quests. You fight thugs. And you fly around and fight thugs. And you fly around and fight thugs. And they all have the same little sayings like, Oh, you're gonna die, bat! And you kill them in like two punches. Well, you don't kill. Batman doesn't kill. You hurt them. Mm -hmm. Knock them out in two punches. Um, so, I mean, I guess it's not really a bad thing, but it seems to get very repetitive, especially being a gamer girlfriend and you're watching it. It seems like you're watching a lot of the fighting thugs over and over and over again. Um, the only other thing I could really find, which might just be me because I have extremely sensitive ears, is that the menu that you're on when you're going through his gadgets and the settings and all sorts of stuff like that is extremely high-pitched. It's got a lot of very high-pitched tech noises, or if you've got, you know, high-definition headphones on or Turtle Beach headphones or anything like that, it might get a little bit irritating, um, a little bit obnoxious. The pretty cool feature is that, you know, you can complete the game if you're just one of those people that wants to play and get it done with, and, you know, so you can talk about all the features and everything like that, then you can finish it, but you can be under half percent complete with half percent, fifty percent complete with everything that you can do in the game. Just is that you'll probably spend most of your time playing the game in the bat radar vision, because it does help you figure out what you can and cannot interact with. Um, if you're looking through normal vision, you know there's a lot of browns, there's a lot of grays when you're inside buildings and a lot of the thugs actually blend in, kind of like a bad guy camo. Um, so when you use the bat vision, anything that you cannot interact with is like a darker blue. And anything that you can interact with, especially people, is like a bright orange so it obviously stands out very well. So some of the pros of the Batman game that I really like, there's three things that I picked out so far. That This first thing is that you don't really see in a lot of video games is that the damage stays. Any damage that you inquire or acquire from bad guys, from your own stupidity falling, running into things, stays. So when you start off, you're very clean cut, you're very, you know, no holes, no anything, and then, you know, by the end of the game, your cape is completely tattered with holes all over the place. You've got bullet holes in your costume, you've got dirt all over your face, and tears, and blood, and all that stuff, which was, that's pretty cool. Because it's not like, you know, in superhero land, as soon as they fight a thug and get damaged, they go home and get their little seamstress to stitch up their costume and take a shower and get all clean cut and perfect again. Nope. So that's a pretty cool feature that I enjoy myself. Um, I have right here the Game Informer. Again, going to be backwards, but I'm pretty sure you're smart enough to figure out that that says 10. It got a 10 out of 10 rating. Um, as you can see here in the picture, he's got, I hope you can see it, he's got like the tears and you know, the holes in his cape that he's probably, judging by how many tears there are, he's probably halfway close to, maybe halfway 75% done with the game. Um, but it stays, which is pretty cool. Uh, when he was fighting Clayface, Clayface was just getting clay all over him, and by the beginning, you know, at the beginning of the feud, he was just Batman. And by the end of the feud, he was a brown blob. And it didn't just wipe off or magically disappear, which was pretty cool. Um, 
So yeah, it has a 10 out of 10 rating. I'm not going to read what it says in there. Obviously, it has a lot of positive things about it. If you have Game Informer or your nearest <coughs> excuse me, GameStop, you can go pick up your copy of Game Informer, and this is really ridiculous that everything's backwards, but deal with it. So, go get your own copy of Game Informer or read it online. And then another thing that I really like about it is that there are a lot of mini quests. Not only do you have the main quest that the main characters send you on, but you also have little mini quests that you do for the Riddler. Um, he leaves trophies all over the place that you can pick up and get points for. And um, it's pretty cool, too, because portion of the game, if you download the package, um, you can play as Catwoman, which is pretty cool. Uh, while my boyfriend was just flying around Arkham City, he found a rooftop that had a couple cats on it, and it allowed you to switch to Catwoman, which is pretty sweet. Um, but anyways, uh, another mini quest that there is is if you find a bat signal in the sky, you go to the bat signal, and there are little training simulators that you can go on that teach you how to dive bomb and soar and all sorts of stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. Um, other than that, the only thing other that I really have to say about the Batman is that you meet a lot of characters in the game. Not just, you know, one or two or three bosses that you have to beat, but there's a ton. I don't even know how many there are, probably... I'd... I'd Yes, close to 10 to 15, maybe even 20 different people that you meet. They're not all enemies. You know, you do meet, obviously, the Joker and Harley Quinn and, as I mentioned, Clayface, Penguin, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman. Um, a lot of the head honchos um, for the, uh, you know, Joker's people. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words so bad right now. But anyways... Uh, you meet a lot of people. It's pretty cool to find everybody and see what they look like in the game. So if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, you can post them below. Subscribe to my channel. I will have new episodes coming out whenever I can get them out. Uh, I won't only be talking about games, but I'll be talking about different types of accessories that you can get for your game console as well. Just letting you know that most of my game reviews, if not all, will be Xbox 360 because that is the main thing we have, is the Xbox 360, but I can do some classic games, because I do have Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and a PlayStation 2. So, that should complete the Gigi's thoughts today. Sorry, it's not extremely entertaining, but hopefully I helped you out and gave you a little bit more information about a game you might possibly be thinking about playing, or getting for your guy if you're a gamer girlfriend. Let me know what you'd be interested in seeing, and I will do my best to make an episode. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day.